What about the happiness? You said that that's one of the problems of when you're out in space. How do you keep humans happy? Again, asking for a friend. Yes. I mean, one of the big challenges is you can't just open a window or walk out a door and blow off steam, right? You can't just go somewhere to clear your head. And in that sense, you need to build habitats that are homes that really care for the humans inside them and have, whether it's biophilia and a place where you can go and feel like you're in nature or a VR headset, which for some people is a a poor simulcrum, but is maybe better than nothing. Um, you need to be thinking about these technological interventions that are going to have to be part of your home and be part of your maybe day-to-day -day ritual to keep you steady and balanced and happy or feeling fulfilled. Mm -hmm. What about other humans, relationship with other humans? Yeah. Do, those get, do those get weird when you get past a certain number of humans? I'm not an expert in this area, but an anecdote that I'll share, my uh, understanding is that NASA has still not decided whether it's better to send married couples or single crew members in terms of uh, you want some level of stability. You don't want to have uh, the drama of romantic relationships like you're you know, alluding to before, but they can't decide because married couples also fight yeah. <laughs> and have a really tough dynamic. And so there's a lot of open questions still to answer about what is the ideal psychological makeup of a crew. And we're starting to test some of these things with the civilian crews that are going up with Inspiration4, like last fall with SpaceX and Axe 1 that's going to fly in a few days here in March. As we begin to lengthen the, the time of those civilian crews, I think we'll start to learn a little bit more about just average everyday human to human dynamics and not the astronauts that are themselves selected to be perfect human specimens, very good to work with, easy to get along with. I wish you collected more data about this pandemic because mm. I feel like it's a good rough simulation of what it'd be out in space. A lot of people were in lockdown, some married couples. I think a lot of marriages broke up, a lot of marriages got closer together. Um, so it's like, it and then the, the single people, some of them went off the cliff and some of them <laughs> discovered their new happiness and meaning and so on. It's, yeah. a, it's a beautiful little experiment, a painful one. Yeah. Is there a thorough way to really test that? To, because it's such a costly experiment to send humans up there, but I guess you can always return back to earth if it's not working out. That's you what can, we hope. That's <laughs> what you hope. You don't have like a, you know, Apollo 13 situation yeah. that doesn't quite make it back. But yeah, the, this is also why Mars is such a challenge. The moon is only three days away. That's a lot quicker to recover from if there's a psychological problem with the crew or any type of maintenance problem, anything. Three years is such a challenge compared to these other domains that we've been getting more used to in terms of human spaceflight. So this is a question that we will need to have explored more before we start really sending crews to Mars.